What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for the Manchester City 6-0 thrashing of the Shakhtar match analysis. Now, not in my usual background, you may be able to tell, I'll be away for the next couple of days. Is it going to stop the grind and stop the videos? We've already got a match vlog out. I'm going to leave the link to that at the end of this video if you want to go and check it out. But we're here just to talk about what there is to talk about from the game from yesterday. So Manchester City ended up overall winning the game 6-0. Very dominating performance. We're going to crack on with that in a moment. We're just going to talk through the team selections. Inchenko being the left-back coming in in place. I thought it was uh, very sentimental of Pep to do that. Not to start him in the Ukraine, but do him uh, for the game at the Etihad. And in honest opinion, I thought Zinchenko had an absolutely outstanding game didn't do anything wrong Shakhtar going forward really struggled at times Taysen looked a little bit lively but other than that they looked uh, quite shell-shocked by Manchester City's quality they couldn't cope with us at times and the Etihad pitch is very big and so it's very difficult to be able to contain us and just like the match on Sunday Southampton struggled with the pockets of space that Man City were finding it ended up accelerating Manchester City into the lead and ended up not looking back. And to be honest, I find that all down to Fernandinho, David Silva and Bernardo Silva in being able to intercept and find them pockets of space and make things happen, not only on the counter-attack, but when going forward, being able to find players at the correct time. Absolutely phenomenal. This is why we're not feeling the impact, impact sorry, of Kevin De Bruyne not playing for us. It's because these players are able to find these pockets of space and are able to work so well together as a team and be able to get everyone involved and be able to offer a little bit of a different dimension to Manchester City other than the hard-hitting counter-attack that Kevin De Bruyne's style really does suit. Whereas with David Silver and Bernardo Silva, so everything is so technical and being able to cope with such players extremely difficult so we'll go crack on with the game now Manchester City ended up going ahead after 13 minutes from a goal from David Silva came on the right all the Shakhtar players were blocking Riyad Mahrez's left uh, so he ended up moving on to his right foot and an absolute perfect pass straight across David Silva gets half a yard on the defender taps it in puts Manchester City 1-0 ahead and we never look back nothing really happened for the first 13 minutes either which is un unlike Manchester City we like to get off to quick starts and make things happen and this one we were, nothing much happened then boom chance goal done and from there really struggling now We'll move on to the next talking point. 24 minutes in, Gabriel Jesus ended up scoring a goal. Much needed for him and uh, fully deserved for him, in my honest opinion. He's had some uh, very good games over the last few weeks with Manchester City. Very unlucky not to get on the score sheet. I'm glad that he has been able to get on the score sheet in this game. But the penalty decision, why the referee gave a penalty, in my opinion, is absolutely beyond me. Don't bother listening to all the media reports that we're hearing about in terms of Raheem Sterling and all that. It's just absolutely pointless saying Raheem Sterling should own up. No one will own up. Did you see Maradona going, I handballed it, it shouldn't be allowed? No. Did you see Ashley Young going, oh yeah, ref, that was a penalty for, Ma uh, for Manchester City last season in the Manchester derby? No. Did you see Bowley going, I handballed that, and it gave Wolves an advantage, ended up scoring off my handball? Did he admit it? No, no one got criticised for it because it's Raheem Sterling, because it's Manchester City, he gets criticised. Well, to be honest, I take all of it into this here, it eggs out of his here, this here, I don't care. Manchester City go 2-0 up, Raheem Sterling carry on doing what you're doing because you're an absolutely phenomenal player and it's really helping Manchester City out. And at the end of the day, I care about Raheem Sterling doing well for Manchester City, which he is. No problem there whatsoever. 2-0 up, half-time, fairly decent, comfortable. Problem was, Leon were 2-0 up too, and I thought, yeah, we're kind of through here. We're going to go through to the last 16. We've got a big showdown coming up in France. Unfortunately, blew it, ended up finishing 2-2, so at this moment in time, we're not mathematically through. However, we've still got a very good chance uh, of going through in the next game. We should be going through, being six points clear with two games to go, though. But we move into the second half. Raheem Sterling scored an absolutely fantastic third goal for Manchester City, running in from, I think it was around the centre circle, running in around uh, three or four of their midfielders and defenders, getting it onto his right foot and putting a very good finish into the middle of the uh, bottom right-hand corner. Decent goal from Raheem Sterling. Uh, he fully deserved his goal too. We're starting to see the best out of Raheem Sterling, as we stated against the Southampton analysis too. Absolutely perfect from there. Now Manchester City ended up going 4-0 ahead from the spot again. Gabriel Jesus put another good penalty. Good penalty, really good penalty, right into the roof of the net too. 
don't save them really, do you? But uh, David Silva brought down, kind of looked like the correct decision in my opinion. There was a couple of decisions before that the referee didn't give penalties that in my opinion were a stronger case for a penalty than what we had first given. But it's nice to be on the, uh, the, the end where we're not on the receiving end really of these penalty decisions. It's nice to have something go in our favour for once. Uh, but yeah, we ended up going 5 and look, Riyad Mahrez ended up putting a nice little finish in. Uh, I'm not too sure if it under the keeper's legs or not to end up making it 5-0. And then Gabriel Jesus with a nice chip uh, on the counter-attack in the 92nd minute, thinking it over the goalkeeper internet to complete his hat-trick. Fully deserved from Gabriel Jesus. An absolutely dominating performance. Like I said, it leaves Man City six points clear, two games to go in the Champions League. We've got Lyon away um, in France, and then the next match is a home match against German side Hoffenheim, who are currently sitting, I think, in third place. So that's who the chasing pack is. We know with a draw in Lyon, we're going to go through. We know we're winning Lyon. Not only we're going to go through, we'll be guaranteeing first, which means we'll be able to rest players at the Etihad in that game against Hoffenheim. So we'll wait and see for what happens there. But a very, very decent performance from us yesterday. Um, it's just beautiful to watch at times. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. So we'll go have a look at some stats now because we like to have a look at some stats in these analysis. City ended up having 61% possession compared, 62% uh, sorry, to compared to their 38% possession. We had 15 shots, eight of them on target compared to Shakhtar's eight shots, two on target. Edison had very little to do. Uh, had a shot in the first half at save, warmed his hands up, ended up spilling it. Nothing uh, of the danger zone coming from there. 91% pass completion rate from us in this. Perfect from us. 83% from Shakhtar. That's still decent. 11 key passes for City. We ended up creating more clear-cut chances, creating a couple of clear-cut chances. That's impressive. That's very impressive from us. Scoring six goals, but we only created two clear-cut chances, which shows how clinical we were from the penalty spot. And also from when we needed to test the efforts from creating stuff from out of nothing. We were decent. We connected with more crosses. We made more dribbles. They ended up having uh, dominating the defensive stats by having more interceptions. Interestingly, same amount of tackles. Also, the same amount of uh, Man City ended up having more recoveries, which I find quite interesting. Uh, same amount of clearances. Same amount of headed clearances. Two Man City ended up being more dominant in the aerial duels. Both keepers only making two saves. So defensive stats. Very interestingly, both. Very similar, Man City completely dominating the attacking stats though, which is exactly what Pep will be looking for. A pristine performance, absolutely perfect. There isn't much we can improve on from this. We're going into the derby. Manchester United has just been given a massive boost from winning away in Turin in, against Juventus. However, Manchester United, they must be bricking it a little bit going up against us. We scored 12 goals, conceded one in our last two games in 180 minutes. Man United got us to come at the Etihad on Sunday and they have to find a way... Not only if they're thinking about winning the game, they have to find a way of stopping our attack, stopping the midfield momentum. How on earth did they do that when Man City are in the mood? It just, it, it's so difficult to stop. Um, I don't know how Manchester United do that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have a look at it in my preview. Keep an eye out for that one. That'll be up in the next couple of days. But I don't know how they go about that. But in terms for this game, Jesus... My man of the match scored a hat-trick. He has to be my man of the match. But uh, Riyad Mahrez had a great game. Raheem Sterling had a great game. Bernardo, David, Fernandinho, John Stones, Laporte, Zinchenko, Walker, Edison. Everyone that started had a decent game. Great team effort. Great for Jesus to get a hat-trick. Great for Riyad Mahrez with that first assist to break things up. David Silva, I just love him to bits. My favourite Manchester City player. Uh, and, you know, these are players sat on the bench. Players like Aguero that are sat on the bench. And we're able to distribute this. It's heartwarming, it is. It's scary, but heartwarming. You're a City fan. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, there we go. That's been the analysis. There isn't much for us to improve on. More of the same, I say. Bring on Manchester United at the Etihad on Sunday. Let's see what they can do to try and stop us from scoring six more goals. Scoring six in the last couple of games. Absolutely magnificent. So there we go. That's been the video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up so I know you enjoyed the video. And if you're new around here, make sure that you subscribe. Put your push notifications on to be notified when I've uploaded. And also don't forget to go and check out my social media links. They're in the description below. If you wish to go and check them out, you can. My Twitter and Instagram. You can go and check out my email if you want to hit me up with any sponsorships for any videos. Or hit me up with any business inquiries. And you can. That's in the description below too. If you want to check out my second channel Jason Sidlow Travel Man and my brother's partner channel Mix It Do Mix Holiday Drinks. I'll leave the links to them at the end of the video. Just go and click on their profile. Like and subscribe over there. Like and subscribe over here. Don't forget to share the video. Help me grow. We're aiming for 2,000 subscribers before the year's out so it'll be ace to hit that ASAP as soon as possible. So that's fantastic. So there we go. That's been the video. That's been me. It's been JSGC. Hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day. 
Wow, six. It's mesmerising, it really is. It's scary but mesmerising. There we go. I hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day though. Peace. Ciao for now.